We're looking at the Viterbi algorithm for trying to compute the most probable sequence of hidden states for a given sequence of, of x's, a given sequence of observed states. And we, so we, we wrote down this quantity. We defined this mu k z k as a quantity that we were going to try to find a recursion for. And so we, we, we just use some Markov properties here. We factor the distribution. And then we, we moved the max in, and that was that was very nice. And now we have this this recursion. So let's write it down. Let's write down what we what we got. So we got mu k of z k equals the max over z k. Make a little room here. Z k minus one probability of x k given z k times the probability of zk given zk minus 1, the transition probability, times mu k minus 1 of zk minus 1. And let's think about for what k's does this hold. So, so this is looking very nice, right? We have this nice, this nice sort of recursion here for these mu's. And let's think about, you know, uh, so for what k's does this hold? So when k is 1, then this is z0, so that's kind of a little bit strange. So let's, but for all other k's greater than 1, this is fine. So let's, let's make a, restrict this to k from 2 to n. And then let's think about what mu1 should be. So mu1 of zk, or of z1, well, what is that? mu1 of z1, it's the max over z from 1 to 0. So this is just an empty maximization. This is just a trivial maximization. So this is just the probability of z1 and x1. So if you wanted to check, you could also say, OK, what's, what's mu2? mu2 is the max over z1 of the probability of z1 to 2 and x1 to 2. And if you followed this same factorization through here, then you would have, what would it be? It would be probability of x2 given z2 times the probability of z2 given z1 times the probability of z1 and x1. And this max would, you know, there would be no max inside here. We just have the max over, over, um, well, it would just be the max over, over z1 outside. So mu1 of z1 is just the probability of z1 and x1, which we can factorize, factorize as the probability of z1 times the probability of x1 given z1. And this is known. This is just the, the, the initial distribution. And this is just the emission probability. So, so this is all known, and these are known. And we now have a recursion that we can use to compute mu, starting from mu1, and then doing mu2, mu3, mu4. So you go in order. So it's sort of in the forward direction all the way up to mu n. And then once you have mu n, what is mu n? Mu n is the max. So let's figure out. So mu n, what does this give us? Mu n is the max. Let's write it down here. Mu n at the last step, mu n of z n is the max over z from 1 to n minus 1 of the probability of the whole thing, x from 1 to n, z from 1 to n right? Because k equals n. And now, in order to get the, the maximizer over the whole thing, we just take one more max out here, max over zn, or at least to get the maximum over the whole thing. And then we get, that's just the maximum. So once we have mu n, then we can get the, the total maximizing value easily. Okay, so that's great. So we got the maximizing value, but wait, we wanted the maximizing sequence. We wanted 
Z. We wanted the arg max, not not just the maxim the maximum value. So how are we going to get the arg max? Well, it turns out that to get the arg max, you can follow essentially the same procedure. So you if you write if you were to write down this algorithm, implement it in a, in a computer code, and at each step you keep track of the maximizing sequence, then for the next step you will be able to compute the max you know the maximizing sequence up to k minus one. Then for the kth step you will be able to compute the maximizing sequence up to k. So let me illustrate. Maybe I'll illustrate briefly how that happens. So if we have, this is like, if these are the possible values of z here, maybe it just takes like three possible values. And this is step one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, up to n. Then, you know, we want to find the maximizing, or maybe it just goes up to five or something like that. Say it just goes up to five. Oh, no, we'll think about the general thing. So we want to find the maximizing sequence over all of the n, all, all you know, the whole, the whole path. And so if we start out, we have three... Let's say, let's do it sort of by induction. So let's say we have the maximizing path up to step four here for each possible. So what we want to keep track of is the maximizing path that terminates at this, let's call this maybe A, B, and C, that terminates at, at state A for the hidden variable Z. So this is gonna be so this is this is saying that like you know if it were here that would mean that z4 equals a okay so maybe the maximizing path that ends at z4 equals a is i don't know maybe it's something like this i don't know and then maybe the so then we also need we're going to assume that we have the maximizing path for z4 equals b and maybe that's I don't know, maybe it's something like this, something like that. And then let's say that we also have the maximizing path for z4 equals c. And this is the maximizer over the joint distribution from 1 to 4 of the z's and the x's. So in other words, it's, it's the thing, it's, it's this thing. It's the path that, that, that gets this value, that gets the value mu... Uh, mu4 z4 it's maximizing over the z's that came before z4 and let's say the path for this one is i don't know maybe it's something like this something like that now so you know we're going sort of by induction we assume that we have these paths and we want to find the path that maximizes uh, that for a given z5, so for, for z5 equals, let's make this, I don't know, we'll make it a uh, different color. We'll make it red. So now we want to find the path up to 5 that is maximal for z5 equals a. So how are we going to do that? Can we reuse this, you know, all this hard work that we did to figure out these max these best paths well this path it has to go through one of these it has to have some z4 the best path and what these equations are saying is that the path which maximizes so the path which which has this quantity here is we, that we only have to check each of these. We only have to take, you know, we only have to take into account the additional sort of probability of this step from, from four to five. That's this part here. And, you know, the, the emission at five. 
And from there, we know that the maximizer, you know, a maximizing path for all, of, you know, uh, you know, that ends at, at Z5 equals A can be obtained by using one of the maximizing paths that ended, that ended at some ZK minus 1. That's what this is saying. This is saying that, that a maximizing path that ends at Z5 can be obtained by appending you know, that, that ends at, sorry, Z5 equals A, can be obtained by appending A to one of the maximizing sequences that ended at one of the, the ZK, at the Z, Z4s. So, so in other words, it's saying that we only have to check one, you know, these three possibilities, either, either append it to this guy, to the yellow sequence, try that, see what you get, you know, compute the value, Try that, compute the value, and try that, compute the value, and take the maximizer over those. You're taking the maximizer over this value of Z4, and that one of those, one of those three, is going to give you a maximizer up to Z5 that ends at Z5 equals A. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Um, I wanted to just sort of explain it in words rather than write down the formal algorithm because I think it's good to get the intuition for what this recursion is doing. But you can, you know, you of course you can write down an algorithm to to do to implement what I what I described in words here. And then so once you can do that for of course C5 equals A, you do the same thing for the others B and C. So you do that also for you know, these others here. And then you're, you've, you've made the full induction step, and then you're at five, and you're ready to go on. You know, you, you, have the, you have an optimal path that ends at each possible value of Z5. And once you do that, you get all the way to N, and you're done. All right, so that's the Viterbi algorithm. That's how it works, and, and that's how you compute the, the maximum probability path for a hidden Markov model. So this illustrates, you know, this is a this is a great illustration of dynamic programming and sort of, you know, at a more broad level, the basic idea of what was going on here is that the max, you know, that the problem of finding a maximal path decomposes into these sub into sub problems. That's really the key the key thing is that it decomposes into these sub problems and you only have to sort of condition on the value that it ends at here and then you can you can break it apart into into the sub problem so okay so that was uh, I hope that was a, a clear explanation of how this works but it's a very very important um, sort of concept to get your head wrapped around what's going on with this with this dynamic programming because it's very useful in in a lot of different contexts and I think this is a great example of dynamic program to sort of to sort of cut your teeth on to get your head wrapped around of what's going on at least for in an in an optimization type of scenario so so this is for an optim you know dynamic programming for an optimization type of scenario and the forward backward algorithm is is for a you know computing probabilities and inference type of scenario.